Yes, I'm covering the topic of abrutinib, which is a uh, small molecule that has recently been introduced to the therapy of patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia and other types of lymphomas. Uh, the results have really been truly uh, astounding. Over the past year and a half, we've had approval of this agent for treatment of patients with four different indications, namely abrutinib for patients with relapsed refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or patients with frontline therapy who have deletions in the short arm of chromosome 17, which ordinarily makes them poor candidates for conventional chemotherapy. There's also been approval in patients who have had therapy for mantle cell lymphoma, and we've also seen approval for patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Clearly, the success of this drug has been astounding from the fact that the first patient was treated with this drug in 2009. Here, six years later, we have these uh, indications already approved. And there are other studies that are ongoing that will be under review, but uh, results is recently released in Nature Medicine by Wyndham Wilson and colleagues in diffuse large cell lymphoma, shows some activity of this drug, particularly in the ABC form of diffuse large cell lymphoma, which is typically uh, more difficult to, to treat uh, with conventional chemoimmunotherapy. I think that this is a very exciting time because we have now a new weapon to treat patients with these diseases. But like with every solution in, in nature, we also have problems that we might engender. And clearly, um, one of the aspects that we noticed is that patients typically respond well, and provided we maintain the therapy, uh, they may do well. Now, some patients may have side effects, um, small side effects for many, uh, larger side effects for some. Uh, the larger side effects represent a problem, because obviously, sometimes we have to discontinue the drug and that means that we need alternative treatments to be able to treat these patients because they may go on to have very aggressive disease after stopping therapy. Uh, the small effects can accumulate over time. And what we're noticing is that patients who are uh, being given the drug uh, might actually tolerate it differently than patients who are on clinical trials. I tell my colleagues that the patients who actually volunteer to be on clinical trials are somewhat like the knight in Monty Python's The Holy Grail. Namely, they have their arm lopped off and they say it's only a flesh wound. So they have tremendous fortitude and they're very resilient people. And they actually uh, do quite a great service to medicine by offering to go on to these clinical trials. But that's different from a patient who's being told to take a medicine and to take the medicine going on almost forever, particularly if there are side effects such as diarrhea or arthritic pains or maybe some degree of uh, bruising or bleeding problems. I think they can be managed and managed appropriately with uh, good caring physicians, but in some cases we still need to figure out why patients cannot be cured with this drug, at least in our time frame. We've had patients on therapy now for two to three years and they still have residual disease and we're hoping that they might over time eradicate the disease. And so what we're doing is actually going back and looking at the biology of these patients and the biology of these cancers and trying to figure out what's keeping the leukemia or lymphoma cells alive and then trying to attack those different pathways to provide somewhat of a one-two punch. And I think we have some strategies. We're working on a, a protein that we uh, actually found on leukemia cells, which also found in lymphoma cells, uh, which seems to provide a survival growth signal for uh, leukemia and lymphoma cells, and uh, it's something that we use during embryonic life uh, to fashion the organs that are necessary for development. But for some reason, cancer cells have adopted the strategy to uh, reuse this protein, and it provides maybe a survival hook that the cancer cell can use. Now, if we can supply some therapy directed against that hook, we might be able then to unfasten everything and make the cancer potentially grow away. And that would be my hope, that we can try to ultimately cure these cancers by such strategies where we have a very effective delivery of a hit, such as with the drug abrutinib, but then to give another strategy where we can then undermine some of the things that keep the lymphoma hanging on for dear life and allow the patient to go free of disease and be cured, which is really the ultimate goal that we all uh, share.